Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, Jabba, would you mind the door? Yeah. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, all. Um, welcome to today's meeting, the Policy and Resources Committee. Um, we'll just run through the usual notes beforehand. Um, this is a public meeting and members of the public and press are permitted to report on the proceedings. Reporting includes filming, phot photography, making an audio recording and providing commentary on proceedings. Please note this meeting is recorded and streamed live. These recordings are published on the relevant meeting page of the Council's website. By choosing to attend this public meeting, you are deemed to have given your consent to being filmed or recorded and for any footage to be broadcast or published. If the alarm sounds, the premises must be evacuated immediately. Do not spend time collecting personal belongings. All emergency escape routes are clearly signed. Once you've left the building, the assembly point is in the high street opposite the guild hall. Members and other speakers are reminded to use their microphone when speaking. Okay. Uh, moving on to item one, uh, appointment of substitutes. Do you know? Chair, yes. Um, Karen Lewing is here this evening for Marjorie Bissett. That's the reason you're in the chair, Marjorie's Centre Apologies for this evening. We've also had apologies from David Blake. OK, thank you. Mark? Chairman, may I give Chris Mitchell's apologies? He's flying back today, so he is... Uh, okay. he, I, I hoped he was here, but not, not yet, clearly. Okay. May, yeah. may arrive later today. Indeed. Um, Item two, declarations of interest. S Steve, Mark. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, in relation to um, the levelling up round two bid, as a county councillor, I see in relation to the um, engine uh, shed and such like, the possibility of the county council part funding it. So make the declaration there as county councillor. Okay, Mark. Uh, thank you, Chairman. As um, a uh, cabinet member for economy, uh, infrastructure and skills at the county council, uh, this also, that project also falls within my portfolio there. So I declare an interest, but I'll stay and vote on this too. Okay, thank you. And obviously, um, as a county councillor, I echo uh, Steve's comments. Um, so anyone else? Uh, Lynn? Um, well, I guess if we're declaring that we're county councillor, I, like, I am an opposition county councillor and have had absolutely no involvement with the decision making of the cabinet, but I am a county councillor. Okay. And that. <laughs> okay, good, thank you. Uh, public representation. Okay. Uh, minutes of the last meeting, um, 24th of May. Uh, I'll just go through them, uh, read out the page numbers, and then we'll pause for a second uh, if anyone wants to make any comments, ask any questions, etc. Uh, page one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Anything that anybody wants to raise at this moment? No? Good, thank you. So, um, to business, uh, item five, levelling up round two draft bid. Uh, sorry, please. No. Uh, yeah, this is a report um, to de detailing the levelling up round two bid that we've been working on recently. Uh, it's looking for approval for the preferred projects that we can include in the levelling up submission to government uh, that will develop into the, it's a draft bid at the moment, uh, but with permission, then we'll turn it into a full bid and submit for the deadline. Um, the deadline has changed. Uh, the portal was due to be open uh, this week, so we were due for submission on Wednesday, uh, but the portal isn't available at the moment, so we may have a couple of weeks extra uh, to submit, but we're waiting to hear from government. Um, we do have a presentation, actually, that will take us through uh, the details that are also in the report, so that may prove easier. Um, so if we go through that, so levelling up round two, there was uh, a bidding round last year. Uh, there were a number of uh, projects that bid, uh, around uh, 300 projects bid last year. And it's a competitive bidding round. So we are competing with everybody else. We don't get an allocation as such. There are three investment themes we can go for. There's transport, 
Regen and Town Centre, which covers quite a lot, and cultural investment, which includes heritage, uh, arts, libraries and sporting assets. So our projects need to centre around those th uh, three themes. So we're allowed to bid for up to £20 million. We won't automatically get £20 million, but that's the amount we're allowed to submit a bid for. Um, our MP can uh, formally support us, or he can support other bids from across the county. It's not a condition of success, so it doesn't mean, because the MP supports our bid formally, that we will um, get a tick um, and receive the funding. Um, Funding has to be spent by the 31st of March, um, has to be spent by then. It's only in very exceptional circumstances will they give us any other um, extension. And we can bid for three projects. It's counted as a package. Uh, we can either bid for one project or three. Okay. So, as you'll see, uh, it was supposed to be Wednesday at, two at 12 o'clock. This is now extended. We are not sure how long it will take. Guesswork would say the portal will open next week. Um, we've been told once it opens, we have two further weeks then to submit. So we may have a couple of weeks. Um, the bids will be assessed um, initially uh, to ensure they meet the criteria and that all the detail is in there. It will be a tick box, tick box gateway to get through the first stage. The second stage will be a more detailed assessment of our bid. Uh, it will be around value for money, deliverability, um, the strategic links across the bid, and then it looks like a cohesive bid. If we then move on to um, the actual projects themselves, we have gone from a long list of 11 projects. Um, these are, have then been whittled down to four that you will see here, um, and we are proposing three of those four, and we will explain why through the presentation. The Engine Works is our, it's a regeneration project, it's a heritage uh, regeneration project. You will probably all know the building in Shrub Hill. It's a very large premises, uh, it's a listed building. Um, it's not been particularly well looked after. Where the proposal is that we will uh, invest in the infrastructure uh, to make it good, to fix the roof, uh, to make it usable, and then actually uh, develop um, some spaces within it, workshop spaces, so we can actually increase the economic use of the building. This is just a starter for the building. We are looking to, uh, the long term plan is to do more, um, but this will begin the process. The there were a number of proposals with this project. There was a much larger bid that would have delivered more, um, and there were, but unfortunately we couldn't do anything less with the amount, with eight million pounds. It wouldn't have brought us into economic use. It wouldn't have provided the workshop space. It would just have made good the building. So we've gone in between. Um, um, we've get, uh, supporting 2,200 metres square of uh, economic space. Um, that will be uh, workshop space. It will be open basic um, uh, office facilities within that building. Um, but it will mean that we have uh, uh, tenants that can immediately move in and start delivering activity from within the building. It is part of a bigger proposal for that area. Um, we do know that the county are also submitting a bill for a part of Shrub Hill. This stands independently because theirs is actually for the, um, the train station at the top, um, but it will have an impact on all of the activity that's going on in Shrub Hill. The next project is uh, the grandstand at Pitchcroft. This is to refurbish the actual grand grandstand itself. Um, we are looking for £3 million worth of investment. Arena Racing are bringing £3 million match funding to that. And it's to uh, actually upgrade the grandstand as it is. Um, it's quite run down. It's not particularly being invested in. Uh, we're looking to improve the facility uh, for race goers and others that can use the facility on, for other events and activities. Um, we're also looking to um, improve uh, the, the access roads uh, to reduce the impact of flooding that we have on the Pitchcroft. Obviously, we, we can't do anything in the middle of the, um, the, the, 
uh, rice course, but we can improve the access and reduce the impact it has on the grandstand, which means we can use it more often uh, and activities won't be so hindered. It will also impact on the other, uh, say, the rowing club and others that use some of the facilities at the grandstand. I want to go into the next one. The next one is Nunnery Wood Sports Complex. Again, it's a, a great asset um, that is actually in need of some tender loving care. Um, it's uh, got a fully uh, workable athletics uh, area and indoor gym. Um, actually, the, there's more demand on the facility um, than we're actually meeting at the moment. It's in desperate need of refurbishment and has been for a while. Um, if we want to compete and bring some regional meet or national meet to the area we can't physically offer it at the moment because we don't have a grandstand facility outside we don't have toilet facilities and changing facilities outside so we um to be able to actually compete as a, a proper sporting grandstand we need the, this uh, investment it will also increase the investment on the indoor area for the gym facilities um, so we can actually get more people locally into the gym uh, and to using the facility itself that's looking at around £9 million investment. It will actually build us a new grandstand, which will be, um, go to the next one, um, will actually make a real difference for the facility and those users for the future. I want to go to the next slide. So, uh, yeah, it'll be a £9 million investment. Can we go to the next one? The other project that we were actually looking at and had got shortlisted was the Museum and Art Gallery. But when we actually looked at it in detail, there were all sorts of costs within it that we hadn't uh, or couldn't account for through LUF, which included moving the staff out, the, account, uh, the council staff into new facilities. So we would have had to have identified the revenue funding to do that and potential capital funding to find a new home for the, uh, the council staff. We've also looked at the actual amount of money that the museum needed. We can probably find it from other sources. And I think we've probably identified a couple of options for it. So we're not looking to include that one in the final bid, uh, but we will look at all other alternatives for it. So if you actually look at the bid, next one. We are looking for eight million pounds for engine works. The county council are supporting with a 10% match of 880,000. Grandstand is a three million pound investment with a three million pound match, 50, 50 pound for pound. And Nunnery Wood is nine million pounds. Um, they, we have had advice from government, uh, although they uh, suggest a 10% match, they have said with, uh, it, it's not essential. So for uh, council-owned uh, facilities, they understand that actually some of it won't reach the 10% match. And they've said not to stop us. That shouldn't stop us, including that, those projects within it. It will be taken as a whole. So those are the, uh, the projects that we're proposing um, as part of our LUF bid. Are there any questions? Uh, OK, uh, questions. Uh, Andy Stafford, then Steve McKay. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, all these look very good. I just want to ask um, about um, revenue income. If these projects are, are successful, um, you know, for example, the engine works where the county council owned the building, and on, so the, would, would the city council get a share of future uh, revenue generated from the refurbished building? And, and if that also is the case with any of the others? Uh, we are definitely having those conversations with county and there will be an agreement put in place. We are already in conversation with, and I'll, I'll pass to Sean, she's more of an expert on it than me, but she will, uh, we are having conversations with the re racing as well to look at the profits that uh, potentially um, may come from the changes and the refurbishments to make sure that we are receiving an income from that. Um, I'll hand over to Sean to give you more detail. Thank you, Chair. Um, so the three, of the three projects, the position as regards the race course is crystal clear. It's actually a requirement for us to derive some profit from this arrangement 
in order to satisfy the necessary tests that this is not public subsidy. So we need that it's necessary for the public investment to deliver a return on that asset. So specifically within the council's lease with the race course, there will be a profit sharing agreement. So we will have a kind of open book basis upon which we'll measure the upturn in activity in the grandstand and derive profit from that. So that's that project. In relation to Nunnery, um, the assets are managed for multiple uses, including obviously the two educational establishments, but also for public access um, and the um, sports facilities through the um, uh, leisure contract we have with Freedom Leisure. So again, the council would expect to derive financial benefit from that through um, increased um, uh, leisure services fees ultimately. Um, and then in relation to the Shrub Hill project, it's my understanding that that's the least developed in terms of commercial terms. Uh, this investment enables the first phase of occupation and therefore at this stage it's not that certain who will occupy and on what terms and what the kind of sharing arrangement might be. But the City Council very much is um, approaching this project on the basis that it is, a, it is an equal joint venture partner in any investment that's made. Steve. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, in relation to the nunnery uh, sports, that's the big spend, the, not the nine million. Uh, it's looked upon as a, as a cultural um, way forward, hoping to get um, visitors, particularly into Worcester, from both regional and national. Do we know, do we have any idea if any other towns close by, cities close by or whatever, are doing anything similar at all? In other words, you know, when, when we're making our bids, are we doing any checks regionally or try and find out, or is it impossible to do so, you know, as to whether or not anybody else is doing something similar? It is difficult to do so because not everybody um, is open about their bids. We do know locally um, what Malvern are looking at doing and we've had some information on some of the uh, North Worcestershire um, applications and there is nothing uh, within their bids that is competitive with ours. Uh, they're all complementary actually, So, but wider than that uh, we are unsure what other people are doing. Adrian Gregson. Just wave it the wrong place. Um, I was, um, I, I mean, I quite, um, firstly, I'm, I'm slightly disappointed at the, the disappearance of the, the Art Gallery Museum, but understand the reasons what, that lie behind that. Um, in terms of the, um, the provision on the, uh, the engine shed, I mean, that's, that whole area now is developing a number of um, development options. Um, none of which have yet come to approval or, or and certainly not fruition, although um, I know the, the Sheriff Gate side is, is, is um, kicking off fairly soon. Um, uh, they're not interrelated, they don't depend, they're not interdependent in that sense, but obviously there are quite a few which would, if, if they were all to go ahead, would be fantastic for that area and would really complement each other. So I, I think that those are those are, um, you know, to be hoped that we can get that right. My, my issue, and I think it's a really a, mis a misunderstanding or a lack of understanding, is, um, is this all one bid or is this three bids? And, and how do you, how is it, because we described as transport or regen or cultural investment, how do we square all that off as, as one or, or are they separate and and so they could we could be granted one but not the other two if you like it is one bid um and we will only be granted all three they don't break them down into separate projects and it's around the investment in our assets is what we're looking for in uh, the the investment in these assets will make the biggest difference in our area um but yeah we are assessed on a whole package and we will only get Yes or no to all three. Chair, thank you. Um, just obviously going back to, to the engine works, 
bid and, and I asked earlier today and obviously city has been working quite closely with county on the footprint and the detail for the activity around this um, and obviously the leveling up bids I've been told in the previous town fund bid should form part of the blueprint spatial strategy that has been developed by county for Shrub Hill um, but I just feel as though I'm still quite in the dark to make an informed decision whilst this is a city council decision it's our project and it's our bid I think the close links with the county council bid itself you know we, we could inadvertently do something in favour or or against the county bid but I, I just feel as though I'd like a bit more information around the county bid and, and the correlation between the two before I can personally make an informed decision thank you um, the county bid is very much surrounding the, the train station and that entrance into the Shrub Hill area. Um, so it, it's the introduction um, and then you walk down to uh, the engine works. Um, but it, it is very much centred around the train station and that top end of the, uh, the development um, and won't actually have a specific impact on the engine works, but it will provide us with a pathway and the people to come in that can then use the facilities um, for work and employment. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm uh, very supportive of two of the three, uh, less so of the, uh, the Pitchcroft investment. Um, I think there will be some people will, who will query why we want to be investing in something which is uh, supporting gambling and potentially might have an issue with um, protecting animal rights and so on. Um, but I've got two questions really about the Pitchcroft investment. Um, the first one is, strictly speaking, in terms of um, levelling up fund, in what way will Leveling up fund be satisfied by investing in 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 the, in, the, in the stadium because my understanding of the leveling up fund was about supporting people to be able to uh, their jobs and their income and and to give people a better quality of life and so on. Those people are perhaps most disadvantaged. Um, so I, my first question is how will it how, how do we satisfy that leveling up fund requirements? Um, the second thing is that I know that in terms of the justification, a lot of arguments have been put in about um, not only is it going to be investing in the grandstand, but also about potential for um, conference facilities and so on. And I'm very attracted to that because I think it's a great thing to support businesses and so on. But I do also have this sort of second question, which is there are many people would argue that we have got places like the, the Cricket Club and the Worcester University Arena and so on. Um, what sort of assessment have we done to make sure that, um, that, that, that the need isn't being satisfied by those other locations? So there's, there's two questions. <clears throat> Um, first, around the actual asset uh, and the uh, Pitchcroft area itself, um, developing that asset, it, it's, there is a restricted use for that area. We are restricted to racing um, uh, and uh, providing that racing. Um, it's an open space. By improving that grandstand assets, we can do other things in that, uh, that area and that green, green space. Um, if we don't do it, um, our tenant is not going to do it. Um, so it, it relies on us being able to make that investment so that we can uh, have multi-use for it, we can do other things with it, we can um, allow our, our schools and the university and other groups to use it. Um, some of the facilities are currently used by the rowing club, actually by that, that improvement and that access for them. Um, it's increasing it for anybody that uses that Pitchcroft area. The entrance facilities will be improved so that they're not restricted by the flooding. Um, it, it's, it, it's making sure that the, the facility is usable and well looked after so that people will want to use it and will want to hire it for activities uh, other than uh, the restricted 20-day uh, uh, races that we've got. We can do other things with it, which means our local communities and the people of Worcester have some, uh, a, a, an outstanding asset that they can use and be proud of uh, and attract other things. 
Um, as far as um, the assessment of competition with people like uh, the cricket ground and the rugby ground, um, we are working with Mott McDonald at the moment, which is why you haven't got a draft of the bid because they're still working on it. But we are looking at exactly what the competition is locally, um, where there are gaps uh, and what we can offer and what the difference is that the grandstand can offer that isn't being offered anywhere else. They have quite a developed uh, plan and have looked quite extensively um, around what is available locally, what is available outside of Worcester in Malvern and other areas to make sure that what we're offering actually isn't offered anywhere else and that we, we have got we are approaching a gap rather than setting up in competition with somebody else because that will affect our subsidy control and state aid requirements. Um, so we, we are doing some extensive uh, reviews of that at the moment um, and it is proving that we, there is a gap there and that we are reaching for an opportunity that nobody else is reaching. Okay, I've got to leave. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, just a point of clarification on the um, race course. Do we own the actual grandstand as well as the land on it? Uh, so what sort of arrangement will we be going into with the uh, arena leisure in terms of the lease and the investment in, ter in terms of that? If, I can, if you can clarify that. The, the second part of the, that question in terms of the, uh, the uh, race course site is obviously the River Sports Association and the tangled mess that we've had for years in terms of the Canoe Club and the Worcester River Sports Association and the, you know, the, quite frankly, the, the mess that it is in terms of the, um, the usage of that space. Will this facility guarantee that there is a, an arrangement for all those people using the river, at, including the Canoe Club, for a fair and equitable use and access? To, to to the river with appropriate space, independent, independent changing spaces uh, for them to use. That's the one thing. Uh, second question. The, the, so if you can answer those and I'll come on to the others. Through you, Chair. In relation to the first point about what will be the kind of operating arrangement and the um, income. Um, so so I, I, as I mentioned earlier, we consider that this can be addressed through an amendment to the existing lease. So you're absolutely right. These are our assets held on a long-term lease. So ARENA has a long-term lease. Um, and our assessment, working with our external legal advisors, is that agreement can be amended to address this need for profit share, to give us visibility of the accounts and give us profit share um, on an annual basis. So that's the kind of mechanism that we would apply. And then secondly, in terms of um, benefits to other users, that's exactly the question that we did put to Arena Racing Company. And we've referred in the report to our expectation that councillors would want the river sports community's needs to be well met in this development. And we've passed that message on to Arena Racing Company. And they've met that warmly and said that they understand that and they agree and that they will be meeting with those groups. They know, obviously, on a day-to-day -day basis, is how they actually share and occupy and as you say the physical space is very is 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 very actually constrained with the, with the co-use and the actual building itself there's a lease you know there's separate ownership so they recognize that and they and they asked us to pass on to you their commitment that they would recognize those groups the detail of that obviously we have to work through um, and as you'll know um, and as the report reflects all of our projects, detailed business cases, will come back to committee councillors. We'll get the opportunity to scrutinise these projects again. If we are successful in our bid, then the detail will come through to councillors for approval. Thank you. And, and just, I suppose, a point just to note on the Nunnywood um, sports complex. Uh, uh, it is absolutely right that that once was our flagship um asset within the city when it was first got built and and with the associated and it's time that it did get invested and i'm glad it is, is so obviously just a couple of moot points in terms of that obviously with the increase in facilities that you're going to get there parking as always is tight in 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 those situations whether anything could be done in terms of increasing that allocation uh once the business case is up as well as probably uh, and a, a request to if you can include some outdoor cricket nets that used to be once there.
Thank you, and thank you to officers, because there is a huge amount of work behind this, you know, and to work up these ideas to have um, the discussion uh, with partners and with others, and to you know bring a a long list, a, a shopping list of desire down to a short list is a, a huge amount of work um, and a real achievement. Um, it does illustrate absolutely under different ownership and guises capital assets within the city which require investment and have lacked investment that you know for austerity or what other reasons um, they haven't been invested in and and the need is completely there um, i mean i'm particularly keen um, it, it is a package bid but the nunnery wood sports complex um, i think you know out of all of the bids that we've made for central government money, um, this is one that will have potential for sort of wider participation within the city and it's not in the city centre. So I think it, it, to me, it feels much more um, about levelling up um, than some of the other, you know, capital on shinier pavements as it were but you know you have to go with the rules well done for finding a, a theme um opening up our assets for everyone's benefit that ties um three somewhat different projects together so whoever came up with that absolutely well done um my kind of question you know it is a competitive bidding process and at the end of the day, you know, there are stages. It's a minister that looks at, I know, as to how much detail they get. They don't get the full business case, I don't suppose, for one minute. To what extent are we competing against the county council? You know, if I was the minister and seeing a bid for X amount of money in Shrub Hill Station here, and then a separate bid you know, for the, the building next door from there, I probably wouldn't. Are, are they going to say yes to both? Are we competing against each other? The interesting, uh, because theirs is going in as a transport bid, it's actually going in as a large transport bid as well. So it will be in a separate marking uh, pool than ours because we're going in under cultural and regeneration assets. We won't actually be directly competing against them. They, they will take that transport theme separately. Um, so uh, we may be competing with other neighbours, uh, such as Malvern, but with the County Council and the Shrub Hill development, we won't actually because of the theme that it's under. Mark and then Karen. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, I, I want to say thank you to the officers for, for pulling uh, this work together. I know that it's, it's a struggle when you are also um, trying to manage two other programmes at the same time, large scale. Uh, um, the previous speaker mentioned austerity. I don't think for a minute you could ever accuse this government, it, it might be accused of lots of other things, but around austerity and our investments in large infrastructure projects. You're, we've never had it so good in terms of money for capital programmes. We've already got 42 million. We've, in 20 odd years, we've never had 2 million, never mind 42 million for large projects like this that the City Council has been delivering. So, you know, with this, if we got this, we'd be well over 50 million. You know, 60 million is, is, a, is a, you know, not potentially on the offer. So I, I don't think that um, for the, the, that charge necessarily holds up at all in terms of uh, for monies that have been redirected through local government to invest in, in local assets. Um, I, my key point though was going to be about um, how these projects tie in with our city plan because if you go back to our city plan you can see in the themes of the city plan um, sometimes oblique and sometimes uh, specific references to these projects so I picked out for the uh, the Pitchcroft one uh, that we in the city plan to, which we've all signed up to building strong sporting partnerships including with arena leisure and it 
it lists other people too, the cricket ground and others, but it, it specifically lists that. It in, talks about improving flood resilience, uh, building a vibrant riverside, uh, sustainable growth for city uh, tourism, leisure and hospitality. Um, I just wanted to say how I think, you know, kind of congratulated on us all, I suppose, in, in our, having a city plan which spells out some of these objectives for us um, and which we can hang some of these projects together around. Um, I, I would like to say I'd like, I'd like us to do the, the one that's not made it through to this list. I mean, the City Museum and Art Gallery, I think, is still a vi really good project. I'd hope that we can do that um, through our, our, office, our good offices and the money that we've got in the till, uh, that we can do, uh, uh, do this and bring this project forward, even if we can't move it forward as a levelling up proposal. I think it's still a worthy project. Um, so I think there's a, there's a lot of good here. Um, I, don't, I personally don't think this is going to be competitive with, uh, well, certainly not with the County Council, because as, as, um, as the officer said, that, um, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's a distinct and separate um, um, uh, parts of the levelling up agenda and transport is one. The County Council can't bid for this sort of activity. It can only bid for transport function activity. Um, hopefully, there's some a, a level of complementarity between them, between the bid we put in for Towns Fund, which is obviously spending £10 million at, at Isaac Maddock House, uh, and the county's uh, funding proposal for around shrubbill improvements and active travel, I should say. A large part of it is active travel as well, uh, linking uh, ultimately to the station and also uh, this project as well, where the engine sheds. Um, I know the engine sheds are one of those things that we, anybody who's been around Worcester for a long time, you sort of drive past in an instant. And you, but you, uh, you, when you actually bother, you know, go around the back and have a look at the scale and size of these beautiful buildings uh, but in real state of disrepair uh, but you think well this needs you know the you know these are this is real heritage that we've got to, to do um, something about so I, I think that's an excellent project and if it brings in into modern economic use with uh, with new units um, I think that's great news. I was lucky enough to go on a study visit to both Bristol and to Swindon recently where they've done similar pieces of activity around buildings that are sort of former railway um, assets that have been brought back into economic use. Um, I, I recommend that uh, anybody who gets a chance goes and has a look at those too because they're, they're really quite spectacular uh, and um, shows how you can you know, really use heritage uh, and put it to modern uses that, you know, it sustain it and, and keep it um, viable for the future. So um, I, I hope this has a, a following wind with it and, uh, you know, that we do get this as well. I thought I was in your blind spot or something. Thank you. Thank you for for your courtesy, Santa. Um, a lot of it's already been said, I think, but I have to concur with Mark on this idea of heritage and, and Shrub Hill, because too often we think our heritage is just the cathedral and the pretty black and white buildings we've got here and all that sort of thing. But in fact, we have a major railway station, which is very much part of our industrial heritage and national level. So anything we can do to improve that area you know, is, is tremendously important. I was a bit concerned that I'm hearing that gap analysis is just being done because I normally expect it to be ahead of a bid uh, and part of the strategic fit of a bid. And I would hope that one of the things that can be done from what's been said about the two different bids from county and city, that perhaps we can make some linkages that are useful to both. Um, and I, I know it requires a lot of work. I've done gap analyses before myself. And I know how much it takes, but I do hope we can make that um, a sturdy part of the work that's being done. Uh, very pleased to see the idea of, of, of um, raising our game, really, so far as Nunnery Wood Sports Centre is concerned, because it is rather tired, it is rather dated, and if we're going to make it fit for the future, it needs quite a lot of attention, so it's good to see it getting that. The disappointment, of course, is the City and Art Gallery, because one of the things that struck me over a period of years, really, is that 
we've been terribly good at, at um, providing world-class sports facilities. We do that very well. But we've been a lot less good uh, until quite recently at paying enough attention, I think, to our arts and our, our arts and cultural heritage. And it is a very important one. I mean, we, we do have the oldest music festival in Europe, for goodness sake, that, that's in continuous existence. There are a number of other things we could do. It would be lovely to see the offer of our arts and cultural heritage coming up to that kind of level. It needs to do so. Um, and I know it's been an ambition of our, our managing director for some time as well, as for many of us. I hope it would be. It would be very sad if we weren't able to find a decent amount of money from elsewhere to support the changes that the art, the art gallery needs to make because we genuinely could be a regional centre. We've recently acquired very important um, works of art, which will bring in tourists, I think, and, and aficionados from around the country and possibly internationally. I mean, we've recently acquired a Dame Laura Knight piece. We've acquired um, artists of national reputation recently. Um, so, yeah, I'd like to see us pay some attention to that. We've got this um, Canaletto exhibition coming up. That will attract international attention. I haven't seen one in West Midlands since Birmingham did one about 30 years ago. Some of the Queen's paintings were there. I really do think that this is the vital, vitally important piece of work to do. And I would like to see a lot more detail on why we're not doing it now why what we can do with it in the future and i hope that will come to us very soon thank you pat i'd agree with that i've got karen lewin then lucy thank you chair um i'm just going to declare um, a bit of an interest in nunnery wood because um i before lockdown i was running for worcester athletic club <laughs> um but i want to let you know that this week uh, a, a lady runner at Worcester Athletic Club has become the world champion in the 100 metres in her 80s, running it in 19.5 seconds. We've also got a young lad who is now um, number one high jumper selected for Great Britain and is going to the Commonwealth Games. So you can see the absolute asset it is, but we've never been able to have home meets. And I've spent my time there travelling around the country, going to other stadiums with grandstands, with toilet facilities, is, which have been fantastic at great expense and then not having be able to have a home game has been really disappointing for people particularly people who don't like traveling actually um, so i'm so supportive of that and benefiting the school as well i think it's absolutely wonderful um, i agree about the heritage buildings for the shrub hill um, i know that very well i used to go to a gym there and it's very sad to see a building in that condition particularly in such a prominent place um, my real issue is the race course project, I'm afraid, and it's not the conference facilities, fantastic. I completely favour the rowers having better facilities. I think it's shocking that they don't. Young people that have got, got a, a sporting future, it's really important. But what I struggle with is, is investing in something that some people think is an, an ethical investment so the problem is is if we were getting profit from gambling from from um people spending money on alcohol and horse racing which some people have a real issue with as a as a council i have a bit of an issue with that and i'm hoping that if we can get profit that we say our profit is coming from the conference facility and from something else and arena take the profit from the unethical side of the, bu the business i can support this but unless we can do that i'm afraid i cannot thank you, okay, thank you. and lucy um, and Rick, I, I, I really do welcome um, all of this um, and i think it's really important that we um i would like to see um sports facilities particularly for the more um enabled um so things like walking um sports and that sort of thing so for everybody um i also very much welcome the um the engine works 
Um, I don't know if you know, but um, certainly a while ago, the um, trains used to go to the vinegar works and the actual um, lines used to be in with the, um, the the road and that sort of thing. And really, the, the, it's, it's a real regeneration of that building. Um, and um, it's got so many hist sort of bits of history and everything else. And I too um, feel that, um, yes, I would have liked the art, art gallery to have been included. I quite understand that um, the reasons why um, we've had that um, benefactor who's um, given to the art gallery and we must also, we mustn't let that um, facility, um, we, we've got to celebrate it. Um, we tried it about six or seven years ago and um, unfortunately the um, office staff um, moved into the art gallery because we needed that um, facility at that, that time. But now we've got to really be imaginative and work on it. And um, really, Worcester's got to really um, feature nationally, internationally, and things like that, the Canaletto exhibition and that sort of thing. We've got to really get Worcester on the map. So thank you. Many thanks, Lucy. Mark. Um, thank you very much, Chairman. I didn't mean to come back, but uh, uh, just um, I just wanted to say to, to um, Councillor Lewing, I mean, I understand her view about the ethicalness of horse racing and of gambling. Um, I do disagree with her. And I think, you know, for the, for the tape, for anybody listening in and seeing in, I don't think racing is unethical. Uh, I think in this country it's well-licensed uh, and, uh, and well-run. Uh, and in the, in the vast main, you know, it, it, um, it's a very important industry to many parts of the country. It's also uh, hugely enjoyed and enjoyable for many people. I respect other people who have a right to say that, but I, I, I just wouldn't want uh, the general public in Worcester to think this is, um, this is a view that is shared by all of us it's respected i respect the view but i don't share it i guess is my view um uh, i mean we also already make lots of money off, off um we license every premises in the city as, as everybody knows uh, and every gambling venue in the city uh we also you know um do a whole range of activities ourselves which have you know licensed venues as part of it we're having a tom jones concert in the middle of the race course where there'll be i'm sure there'll be alcohol available and things like that so you know i understand people's concerns and and and, and uh, personal views but in terms of of this I, i'm satisfied that the, the arena racing proposal or the one that's at, at our own um uh, uh, conference facility uh, will benefit the people of Worcester and it will bring more money in here and, uh, and develop our economy and, and in important ways as I said it's already set out in our city plan and I, I think all three proposals do actually help us to deliver those. Uh, thank you Mark. I mean, from my perspective I would urge colleagues to see the, this as a package. Uh, I echo Mark's comments there, um, Councillor Lewing and, and perhaps others have passionate and deeply held views about certain aspects of, of the package, and I respect those entirely. Uh, but I think if we are to proceed with this, we, you know, the, the facility at Pitchcroft has needed this level of investment. The facility at Nunnery Wood has needed this level of investment for a long time. I, we've been having these conversations since I've been on the, the council about Nunnery Wood, and I'm sure colleagues who've been here for longer will have, we, you know, can take them back even further. So I would just, with, with the essential caveat that I respect the, the, the view about um, that, that Councillor Lewing has raised, I would really urge us to, to grasp this opportunity now and to see this, this as a, a real opportunity to drive forward on three key areas of the city. Um, are we, in terms of comment, uh, is everyone happy to proceed? Good. Um, 
The recommendation is that we note the contents of this report and approve the preferred projects for inclusion in the levelling up bid submission to government and delegates to the managing director in conjunction with the chair and vice chairs of this committee authority to finalise and make the bid submission to government by the deadline. Can I have a show of hands on that, please? Nine. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, my omission. Uh, those against, please. Two against. And any abstentions? I don't think so. No. no. Okay. Okay, can we move along to agenda item six, termination of revenues and benefits management contract? Uh, Jane. Thank you, Chair. This is uh, uh, primarily a piece of housekeeping. Uh, members will be aware that the, the decision to bring the, the to close the uh, management contract with Civica and bring the, the services back in house was already made in December. However, in discussions with my colleagues at the other authorities, which Avon and Marvin Hills. It was felt that uh, as the, the decision to, to let the contract was a full council decision in the first case, it should be a full can, council decision to bring it back. So I'm just asking for the committee to recommend on to council that we continue with that. In the meantime, there are a couple of changes which are slightly different from the previous report, which I just wanted to make sure that uh, members were aware of. Uh, the original intention is that we would return the contract to the way it was before, in which uh, Witchhaven were the hosts in terms of the physical aspects, the IT and the location of staff, and also the, they were employees under uh, Witchhaven's terms and conditions. Having reviewed the arrangements, the one that now fits best in terms of the transfer of staff back with least detriment to staff, but with value for money across the contract, is for Malvern Hills. So the staff will be returning as employees of Malvern Hills rather than Witchhaven. So there's a slight difference there. And the second point was that uh, I'd emphasise that there should be significant uh, savings arising from returning the contract. That no longer seems to be quite the case. Uh, this is for two reasons. One is that there were substantial savings made when the contract was let in the first place. So within a couple of years, significant savings were achieved. And we're now in a position where perhaps we've seen that in the recent years, the contract is somewhat under-resourced. So we've taken steps to, to build that resource slightly back up again. And secondly, we've had to take into account that uh, the staff will be coming on to the, to, to the um, local government pension scheme as many of them are no longer there and therefore there will be additional costs to take into account in respect of that so in, in in respect of those two areas it's not quite the same picture as we had previously i think there is still a question of the balance of costs across the three authorities but that's a question which is much easier to address once we've uh, brought the contract back in house and then it's a discussion between the three of us rather than including the civica as a third party so i'm simply asking if uh, members are content to recommend to council that we continue with the process and and bring the, the contract back in house uh, potentially by october uh, but as early as uh, december uh, of this year thank you comment or questions please colleagues Aline. thank you um yeah pleased to see that this is progressing because i know you know we have had concerns about the, the level of service um, that we've been receiving and that our residents have, have been receiving. Um, I guess it's a fact of life that in terms of where the staff are going for the least cost option, um, does that mean that they won't be on the real living wage? Um, so that first question. Um, and then it talks about transferring and the staff joining the local government pension scheme, which is excellent. I just wonder whether in some cases is that rejoining the pension scheme and is there a process of what's happened to the lost years, if that's the right terminology? You see what I mean? Through you, Chair. In terms of the first part I, i'm not aware that Malvern hills has signed up to the living wage or is committed to the living wage but the assessment was done on the basis of which will be the least detriment to the staff but within the the uh, best terms and conditions for the contract as a whole so there should be no um there should be no no uh, position where they are in any any uh, any worse off if i can put it that way as they would be if they were in worcester and that's the way that it was worked out and as we are committed to paying the living wage then they should 
be subject to that same um, flaw. And respect of the other part, remind me, sorry, Lynn. Oh, oh okay. Sure. Always keen to jump in and answer a pensions question. <laughs> uh, so, um, so, the, so for colleagues who worked for a local authority before a Chupi transfer, I mean, you, you may be aware they had rights to keep their pension with them and remain in a pension scheme as a, and a admitted body status. If they chose to leave, then they've effectively created their own break in service for the pension scheme point of view. Um, so they would, re they would, if they chose to rejoin, they would be, it would be sort of as if new, but you can, any, anyone joining in and out of the pension scheme can ask to carry other periods of service with them. But the rest of my answer is that they were entitled to take their pension with them if, if they transferred out with a pension. And ordinarily what you see is that people don't tend to leave if they've got one, they stay in. So they will just then rejoin. Um, well, it'll, it'll be invisible from their point of view. They'll sort of stay in the scheme irrespective of the employer. Uh, sorry, Chair, just to add to that, they, the, the intention is that they will, uh, the staff within the Civic of Contract will remain as an admitted body within the pension fund, so they'll simply transfer back with all their terms, conditions as they are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Chair, uh, interest has uh, come to light uh, whilst the debate has uh, developed. My brother works for Civic and it's affected by these changes, although it's not a pecuniary interest, but I thought I'd better clear it here. Yeah. Or comment. Okay, uh, right. So just to uh, go back to the recommendation, the committee recommends to council the return of the revenues and benefits to an in-house shared service staff employed by Morton Hills District Council, noting that further reports will be brought to this committee once the transfer has been completed and a review of the service has commenced. Uh, show of hands in agreement, please. That's carried. Yeah. Okay. I'm not aware of any other business, so on that note, uh, thanks for your time, folks. Thank you. Are you uh, content?